So now we're going to learn the eyedropper and the color sampling tools. So let's go to our little cereal box here. Now, we, what if we wanted to paint something over it with our paintbrush that was the same color as, as this, uh, you know, this, this blue color? Well, no, the way what we've been working on so far is we'd have to open up a color, the a color picker. We'd have to kind of like, okay, well, that looks about like the right color here. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. And experiment. I don't know. Is that, oops, let me use my brush. Test it out. Does that look like that blue? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty close, but it's not it's not spot on. It's really close to some of the color over here, right? The better way. We're going to use the eyedropper tool, which is right over here. Or you can press the letter I on your keyboard, which I find to be convenient. I. And you can just click on a spot in this image, and you'll notice that every time I click, it changes this this color over here. So it's choosing the exact color of that one pixel that you're clicking on. So for example, here would be white. Over here would be Tony the Tiger orange, more orange, you know, different or shades of orange. I don't know, whatever this color is. That's a much better way of uh, choosing your color. Then you can press B for brush. Uh, I don't think we've worked on the brush quite yet, but press B and it just kind of gives you a standard paint brush. And you get the exact color you wanted. You'll notice that when we're using the eyedropper, if we hold the left mouse button down, we move around, it gives you a ring, and the bottom of that ring, uh, the color stays the same. Notice on your screen, it's a kind of a dark blue, but the top is white. Now the top's orange. I'm gonna turn, change the top blue by moving it over here. Uh, now it's gonna be red because of the Kellogg's logo. The, what it's doing is it's showing you the color that you're about to select, compared to the color that you had selected previously. And this is kind of nifty if it's like, oh, that's, a cl that's close to the right color, but I need it a little bit lighter. Well, does that, does that look lighter? No, that's darker. Let's move it around. Let's move it around. Now it's, uh, there's, mm, there's a lighter color, right? So it's easier to compare when you see them just right there in front of you. So that is the eyedropper tool. Now we're gonna work on the color sampling tool. So first thing, go on the web and find an image of a wedding. Here's one on my website. If you wanna use that one, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and copy image, go to Photoshop, say new, clipboard, create, control V, it'll paste it in. So now what we're looking at is a picture of four young girls in white dresses, right? But they're actually not wearing white dresses. Let's use our eyedropper tool and check the color. It's quite gray, isn't it? Or how about over here? It's actually a little bit, uh, you know, you can see it's, it's quite a bit purple. Um, how about over here? It's quite a bit of blue, isn't there? So actually these, their dresses are light purple, light blue. Um, yeah, they're very purplish, very bluish. Pinkish, bluish, yeah, it depends on where you click. So they're not white. What are, what's happening is our brains are, uh, are interpreting it quite a bit because we know what we, what it, it changes it to match what we expect. Our brains do this in, in every way that we perceive the world. So it just, it, we have a lifetime of experience. And when we see th something that's uh, actually in reality, slightly off, it just realigns it to match up with uh, what we've seen so far in our life or, or matches up with our previously existing beliefs. If you've been born and raised in the U.S., you've seen plenty of weddings in person where you have looked at dresses and established that we wear white or women mostly wear white in the wedding party. And we reinterpret these dresses to be white, but they're not. So let's fix that. And by the way, there's actually work in this for those of you who want to be a digital artist as a career, um, especially wedding photographers need Photoshop experts to adjust, photo, uh, adjust colors and whatnot. So we're gonna go up here to the eyedropper tool. We're gonna to right click. We're gonna choose color sampler tool. And we're gonna click around on this girl's dress here. Um, I'm gonna click right there. Mm, that's a kind of like a, a light spot. I'm gonna click in a dark spot. Uh, I'm gonna do sort of like a middle spot. 
a couple more. Sort of middle there, kind of dark over here. So you'll notice that each of these points is numbered. One, two, three, four, five. Now, uh, there should be a, a panel that goes along with this tool called Info, mm, but I do not see it. So where do we go to find it? Window. And there it is, Info. So you click that. Great. Okay, here's our Info panel. This is going to get a little complicated, but uh, it's surprisingly subjective. But it's, it's, this, is, this panel attempts to lend a little bit of objectivity to color perception, which is very objective. So what it's saying here is you'll notice that this bit up here is always blank. Um, but number one, it has RGB, and it gives you the color codes for it. It's uh, 270, 217 parts red, 220 parts green, uh, 227 parts blue. And that's point number one right there. So it is, it's very light. Now you can tell it's light because the lighter the color, the higher those numbers will be. 255, 255, 255 is white. So it's pretty close to white. But it's not. In fact, it's actually bluer than anything else. So it's really just a super light blue because it has a lot of blue, not so much red, middle of the, ro middle of the road green. Uh, same here. Same on number, point number two. You know, it's mostly blue, isn't it? 217. That's the highest number. Let's see if this uh, holds true for the rest of the dress. Yep. 278 it is highest number in this little number three, spot number three. Then spot number four here, blue again. 198 is the highest color. How about this one, spot number five? Actually, it's a tie for, spot number five is right here. And red and blue are a tie. And then there's quite a bit less green. By the way, that would make sort of like a purplish color if you have equal equal amounts of red and uh, red and blue. And you can kind of tell, you can look at it, you can kind of go, okay, yeah, I'm starting to see a little bit of purple in there. And you can kind of look at the picture and tell it's like, kind of has a slightly purplish bluish tint. It's subtle, but these numbers don't lie. And so what we're going to do is we're going to going to add an adjustment layer in an attempt to fix that. So let's see, you should have a tab called adjustments. If you don't, you know where to find it. Window adjustments. So uh, we have a variety of, of adjustments here. And what it'll do, what it will do is it will add a layer to our composition and it will like sort of like act like a little like a, like a tint. It'll tint everything or it'll, it'll change it. So the one we want is color balance. And we want to adjust the, oh, you know what? Um, I can't see it because of my picture of myself there. So we're going to pull this out and we're going to adjust it. And we're going to watch the info panel here and watch these numbers to see if we can make them you know, stop being so blue and be kind of like more middle of the road white. Uh, the first thing we could do is just lighten the picture a little bit because the whites aren't, as bright as they could be. So you know what, I was, I was just telling you to do color balance, but in this one, let's, do, let's start with brightness. And let's brighten it up a little bit. So brightness is under adjustments, and it'll make this property panel pop up, and we can start to brighten it up and watch the numbers on the info panel. Do you notice that the numbers on the right are getting bigger? That's because the left number is what it was, the right number is what it is now. And I'm going to get them closer to 250 without, as close as I can without washing out the photo. I could do this, of course. And look at that. <laughs> but look at the numbers on the info panel. I mean, they're close to perfectly white. They're all, you know, 254, 254. You know, like I said, white is 255, 255, 255. Those are all close. It's really close to white now, but the, but the picture looks terrible. So let's not do that. We're going to lighten it up just a bit, just to try to get closer to white. With, and it's, we're going to go as far as we can without making the picture look bad. So it's, you can't actually, you can't go very far without it looking bad. Because they're holding these little trinkets. And then they disappear if you go too high. So I'm only going to go. I, I'm only going to, I'm only going to bring it up a little bit. I'm going to leave it at five. You can still tell that there's like little cellophane bags in their hands, but it's, it's closer to white now, right? We've gone from 227 to 232. Hey, I'll take it. It's closer. Now, let's go back to that adjustment layer. Now, since we already created it, we can actually just go back and click on it on our properties here. 
and the prop and I'm sorry on our layers panel here you can just click on it and it changes the properties panel again so here we are we have the properties panel pulled up and now it has the color the color balance color balances now we want these numbers on the right hand side on our info panel to be let me move this it's starting to bug me be as close to white or 255 as possible but we also want them to be even so we don't want them to be 217 with one of them like 225 with the other one we want them to be like this because that's that's neutral it's not tinted any specific color this is specifically tinted blue right so we could bring the high numbers down or we could just bring the low numbers up and then it would be closer to white so we're going to do that let's go to red and bring it higher and let's watch the info panel as I adjust it. Okay, that's not bad. Things do have a more purpley tint, which is what happens when you introduce more red into a blue. Now let's bring up that green, because it's really lacking in green. Okay. Now, let's take a little look at our panel here. Um, spot number two is 222, 22, 222, and 223. That's really pretty close to white. 217, 215, 211. Okay, so spot number two is a little lacking in blue. Let's see if that pattern holds. Uh, 282, oh, sorry, 182, 178, 168. Uh, that is pretty skewed. This one's eh, not bad. You know what, though? I'm noticing that now it's, it doesn't have enough blue. Same here, same here. You know what? Even though this one's looking really great, the other ones are looking, they don't, they just don't have enough blue. So let's try to, and, we're, and this is all subjective. It's kind of like a, you gotta compromise. Just try to get it as close to white as you can. And I'm just kind of reviewing all the points as I adjust this. That seems to be a reasonable compromise right there because most of the numbers on like the blues match the greens pretty closely. Now the, yeah, I'm sorry, I meant to say the blues match the reds pretty closely. Now the greens are a little lacking, so I'm going to bring them up just slightly. And honestly, I think that's about as close as we're going to get. So now these white, these, this, these points, are as close to the white dress as you can get. Um, let's see if it, let's look at a, an unaltered version of it. Okay. So it's subtle. Here's an unaltered. Move this away. And here's what we did. So you notice, as you, if you look at the colors of the dresses, it's subtle, but it does tint, and you can notice. Oh. Uh, it, it is whiter. And then when you look at the old picture, you can go, oh, you know what? It did have a bluish tint. So yeah, it's subtle, but it, but it's noticeable once you go back and forth like that and look. So this is part of your assignment that's going to be coming up this week. I'd like you to go onto the internet, find some wedding photos, preferably some that look a little more amateurish because uh, people put a lot of wedding photos on the on the internet. And a lot of them are really well done and professional, and probably somebody has already done this. I've, I've, I've done this before, gone online, and just found tons that were just like, they got the dresses, you know, the colors really well corrected. We want to find one that maybe somebody snapped with their cell phone. I want you to find somebody's white dress and do exactly what we did here. Just get that dress as close to white as possible. And then export it as a JPEG and send it to me. So your two assignments this week are uh, use the perspective crop tool to send me a, uh, a cereal box cover or something similar, a book cover, something rectangular that originally was at an angle. And then send me a wedding photo that you've corrected. So uh, that will be due uh, this coming or the next next Monday. I'll talk to you soon.